You're watching free weekly tutorials by Joni Young. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm acrylic artist Joni Young, and today I'm going to be showing you step by step how I painted Book of Spell. Just want to give you guys a quick rundown on the brushes and the paints and the canvas we're using today. Um, we're working on a 9x12 double primed stretched canvas. Okay, so these are the colors that we're going to be using today. We've got neon yellow, hot pink, dioxazine purple, turquoise, and titanium white. Um, large blending brush here. And I've also got my handy little old toothbrush that I love to use for flicking stars. And I've got my favorite little flat brush. We're also going to be using a very small liner brush for fine detail and a filbert brush. We've also got a round brush and last but not least my mini fan brush. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started now. Okay guys, we're going to start off on a 9x12 double prime stretch canvas. Grab a large blending brush, get it a little bit wet and pull in some dioxazine purple. We're going to cover the entire canvas with it. Now once we've done that, we're going to get an old toothbrush, get it really wet, and pick up some titanium white, and begin flicking those stars all around. Now grabbing a round brush, this is number 7, I'm going to soften and dab on part of those stars and just soften them up a little bit and then add a little bit more white making some of them larger a little bit brighter and then softening around to make a little haze and then right across the bottom pull and flick from one end of the canvas to the other now in slow motion here, so you guys can really see what I'm doing, with white, pull, press, and flick on an angle. This is going to be the beams of light shooting out of the book in between the pages. And now I'm just going to come in really lightly with whatever's left on my brush, working wet on wet, begin shaping the other pages in the book. Now I'm leaving some spaces in between each of those pages so I know where to come in with the highlight and the shadow. And I begin working on the rest of the book on the right side. It's just all very rough at this point. Now as the painting dries, You'll be able to add brighter highlights. So just straight white, carefully cut in around the edges and start building up that light. So at this point, I'm just concentrating on the shapes and the light and shadow and where those pages are falling. I really like working wet on wet um, and especially in this case because you get all those soft mid-tones in and it looks really blended and it can be tough to do when acrylic paint is dry now with a clean number seven round brush, I'm taking 
purple, no water. And I'm just going to paint in the middle right there and a little shadow on the side and then across the very bottom of the canvas. So that's the binding of the book right there. And it's going to be one of the darkest spots on the book and then right in between those pages. So I begin to build that up right now. And soften up some of the stars a little bit more. Wash that brush, switch to a fan brush, get it really wet so that all those bristles spread apart. It's got to be really wet for this with white. Line it up on the edge of the book cover on the corner there. Pull and drag and flick lightly and it'll look like natural pages in the book. And I would use this same technique and brush for painting grain and wood. So it's a really good tip if you're wondering how you would do that and not wanting to take the time to do every single page. Um, this you can get it this way you can get it done a lot quicker. And let's come in right there, pull and flick very carefully for those beams of light and that glow in and behind the book. Now I've got my small flat brush. It's dry, no water first, just straight white. And that page on the bottom right is going to be the brightest. So I'm going to go back quite often and re-highlight that as it dries. And I'll begin adding the highlights to each one of these pages as well. Now I recommend using a flat brush for the pages because you get that nice straight crisp edge unlike using a round brush. And I talk all about my top five must-have brushes in my last video, Forest of Light. Um, so if you haven't watched that, you might want to go watch that after this. And I just give you a, a breakdown on top brushes that I use and show you how to use them and what they're used for. So let's continue adding the highlight to these pages one at a time. So I pull across and then down on an angle. Now it's important to just take your time and do one at a time or you can get you can quickly get lost in them. Sort of like painting petals on a flower. It's the same. I found this to be very similar to that. So just one at a time, thinking only about where the light and the shadow is. And I'm dry brushing, sort of scumbling right at that point where I've hardly got any paint on my brush just to get a really soft blended look and then more paint right on the edge there where I want it to be the brightest Working some more on these beams of light, pressing, pulling, and flicking. And then there's another page right here, so I'm just going to soften with a little bit of white left on my brush and then cut in where I want it to be the brightest.
And then there's one right underneath that. It's just a little bit softer. And then I'll finish the edges in bright white. So we want to leave a darker shadow in between each of those pages. So light shadow, light shadow. And some being darker and some being brighter. I find that easier sometimes when I'm working on something that is challenging to me instead of thinking about does this look like a book um, I look at it and break it down into light and shadow and shape I forget about what exactly I'm painting and that can make it a little bit less intimidating I know some fellow artists actually have said that they turned the image their reference photo upside down and they swear that that makes it a lot easier uh, to forget about what they're painting and just focus on the light color and the shadow and shape it's something i've never tried but i've always thought about doing maybe one of these days i'll try that and i'll do a tutorial for you guys that would be interesting so you guys can see how using this flat brush is really really handy for these straight edges and coming up and over on all those pages. And this painting so far I'm only using, it's a limited palette right now, of white and purple. That's it. Now I just chose um, purple, but you guys, you know, it would work in, in any other color. You could do blue, uh, dark green would look really neat, or even black and white, and then come in later on with um, those magical beams of light and stardust in other pastel colors. I'm just on this purple kick lately for some reason. It's, my, it's been my favorite color for the last month or so. And I pull straight underneath the book cover right there, making it a little bit thicker. And I don't want to get too caught up in worrying about the details of every single page and line and fold in there because it's a painting, it's not a photograph. And I specifically concentrate on color and mood in my paintings not making things look um, like a photograph okay and I'm just gonna scumble in some darker purple around the edges and right around some of those pages. And there's a shadow right across there, almost like there's a triangle of light right in between. You want that little patch of highlight right in there. Okay, now it's time to start cutting in with the darkest shadow in between these pages. And I'm just taking a flat brush again with more purple, no water, and very carefully cutting in and around where I want it to be the darkest and have the most contrast.
increasing the shadow on some of these pages now. Right on the edge and above that area of pages. Just very softly doing this. Where you want your lines to be skinnier and finer, you're not going to press hard with your brush for this. You're just going to be barely touching that canvas and just lightly pulling and dragging with your brush. And where you want it to be a bit thicker, you'll use a little bit more pressure on that brush. So you can really see this starting to take shape now. Adding a little bit of a highlight right there on the bottom right. And wiggling slightly. I'm not being extra careful on the book cover because it's an old book and might be a little bit misshapen and rough. That just helps add some character to this book. And then another little highlight right around the binding. And again, it's just a little bit of white. And again, I'm going to bring up that highlight some more now that it's drying. Building up the bright highlights and those beams that shoot out of the book. This was such a fun, whimsical, magical painting to work on. Um, I think more often than not, my paintings have that vibe to them. It's what I enjoy the most. Okay, so I'm going to bring up the highlight again. The acrylic paint dries darker, so when you think you've got a bright enough highlight, give it a few minutes or so and then decide because it will, uh, depending on the kind of canvas you're working on too, I don't have the best grade of canvas right now. Um, these are more of a dollar store brand and I have to admit I did not gesso this first. Um, when I prime them, if I don't have any gesso laying around, I'll just prime them with um, house paint, like any kind of latex or acrylic paint that I have. So I do have to go back quite a bit and add highlights to this because of that. But I do recommend taking the time and using gesso. Um, one coat is okay, two or three is best. But in general, acrylic paint does dry darker, so you will have to have a lot of patience and know that you're gonna just expect to have to go back and, and re-highlight So I'm going to begin to add a little bit more purple right underneath the brightest page there on the right side and then I'm going to add some of these lines right in between the pages making them the darkest and then giving a suggestion that there's maybe a little bit of a shimmer to this table that the book is resting on and causing a little bit of a reflection down there. Very, very subtly though. And if you guys are hearing any grunting noises, um, I'm holding my grandbaby right now while I'm doing this voiceover. And he's quite a noisy little sleeper. Let's scumble a little bit more up here. Softening those edges. And scumbling just means you've hardly got any paint left on your brush and you're just very softly, gently um, blending around with a brush, almost scrubbing. But scrubbing just sounds too harsh. You're not, you're pushing flat with a brush when you do it. 
so you're not ruining the brush. So now that I've got the edges of the canvas a little bit darker and built up that shadow, the light beams are really popping out. And now I'm switching to a liner brush. I'm using a short one for this. White paint and softening around the edges. And then dabbing right in the center, using the very tip of my brush, gently adding the brightest stars. Now while I've got this little liner brush, I'm going to carefully take some more white paint and highlight the pages. Turning my brush over, I'm going to pull up to the top. And then begin doing a little bit more detail on the stars. So when painting stars, you want to do those little flicks. So you put your brush in the center, that's your starting point, and then you lightly pull, flick to the top, very gently, short little flicks, top, bottom, and the sides. And then sometimes I do a little crisscross as well. Redab the center of each one. And then add a few little dots here and there that don't need to have the little flicks. And I try to make them all different sizes too so they don't all look the same. So I'm just going to continue to add the stars all around the left side now. And I'm putting some over the pages of the book too. We flick down to the bottom, top, and the sides. And don't worry about making too many of these. You can never have too many stars. The more you put in, the more magical it looks. Now let's just add a few little lines after this on the bottom left, right here on an angle, and then across. Back to my square flat brush. Just going to soften a little bit of this white around the book. And some of those pages down there. Now to build up the soft glow to this painting, I begin using the corner of my brush on the edge, scumbling softly. Now if it's not flowing this softly out of your brush, you might need a little bit of water. And then we're going to switch right over to our small liner brush using turquoise and white and a little bit of water. Now the fun part, we're going to begin adding these gorgeous shades of pastel turquoises and pinks and yellows and oranges. Now I'm randomly doing this. There's no rhyme or reason to where I'm adding the turquoise. I'm just uh, going with my mood and the flow of this painting and letting the color lead me. And sometimes I'm adding a little bit more turquoise it a little bit darker and then I take my flat brush and I soften slightly around the edges of it giving it a bit of a translucent look so it'll layer over the purple slightly and then look a little bit blue once it dries so you'll have the light turquoise and then a shade of blue
And now I've got neon yellow and white. So I'm going over top of some of my highlights with this color. I'm going to scumple softly in there. And that's with purple and white. Clean brush, liner brush again, neon yellow and white. Redoing my little flicks for my twinkling stars, still with the white and the neon yellow. And the yellow that I'm using today is just Craft Americana. I think it's the Americana brand. Um, it's not a heavy bodied one like I normally use the whole bean. And I talk about my whole bean neon luminous paints in a lot of my videos because you guys are asking about them. And I just want to mention, I do talk about them quite a bit. I'm not affiliated with them. I don't get paid. I'm not sponsored by them. I just really like them. And when I find a product that I really like and I'm passionate about, I want to share it with um, all of you guys. So lots of dabs and dots with a liner brush here and there, wherever you want to put your stars. So we've got turquoise and white, neon yellow, and then we're also going to bring in some neon pink. And then I'm going to add some phthalo blue a little bit later as well, and some neon orange. I'm just going to fine tune the highlights and shadows a little bit more and then I'm going to start coming in with pink next. So I'm using straight neon pink for this flat brush or a liner brush. I think it's easier through the pages to fan it out with a flat brush. You could use a fan brush for this as well. I just really like my square flat brush. I think I use it more than any brush. Oh, I just love the way that pink looks. Now this is really coming to life. So right in here, I've got some neon orange and white. And I am using whole bean for all of my neons except for the yellow today because I've run out of it. A little bit of the neon orange and white, neon yellow and white, 
to some of my stars, the ones that are the, the brightest. So you definitely don't want to add the orange over top of any turquoise. You won't get a very pretty color if you do that. This is the funnest part of the whole painting, adding all this color. And I've got a little filbert brush right now with some turquoise and white. And I added a little light haze around some of the stars and then I picked up more turquoise and I started from the edge of the canvas and I pulled in. It's all about those flicks. You just dab it on and then flick softly. And I added a little bit of phthalo blue as well. And I wanted to put some right there in the binding, but it was a bit too light so that I lost that shadow. So I went back and I added a little bit more purple to it. Some phthalo blue up here. So it's a little bit of paint and a tiny, tiny bit of water. If your brush is dripping, then it's way too much water. You just want to dab it off on the towel. Now I'm adding the phthalo blue to wherever I have purple or turquoise. But I'm not completely covering up the turquoise or the purple with it. I'm just adding it over part of them. So we've always got a little bit of each color showing. Now I want to finish the top of the canvas, so I'm going to start adding turquoise to it, and I'm using my filbert brush, and the edges, a little bit here and there wherever I, I feel like I need some more. And taking some purple and phthalo blue and carefully get all those little spots on the top of the canvas where I missed and where it was resting inside um, the easel and then along the bottom and I'm going to just add the rest of the twinkling stars a little bit more here and there, highlights. Let's get the last little bit of all these little stars. And then I'll call this painting done. I'm so happy I was able to share this with you guys. Um, let me know if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. ask you guys if you haven't subscribed already please do that now so I can continue bringing you guys great content and tutorials weekly thank you so much again for watching happy painting everyone and I'll see you next time bye for now